Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. I see I have a keyboard in the way. Let me move that. Sorry. <laughs> right at the end, before I launched the stream, I had a little technical issue, but we got it worked out. Anyway, uh, I'm taking a first look at an FMS Flash uh, airplane. This is an FPV kind of airplane, but it's a fast mover. And it was sent to me by FMS. So I want to just take a moment and say thanks to FMS for sending the Flash out for review. And I'll let you know that I have an affiliate link in the description. So if you'd like to pick one of these up for yourself, I have an affiliate link. If you use my link, the channel gets a little bit of a kickback. doesn't cost you any extra money, helps the channel out. So if you're willing to use my affiliate links, that's great. If not, that's cool to do your thing. So with that's out of the way, let's talk about this plane a little bit. And before I get into the box, I figured we'd just spend a minute taking a look really quickly at the specs and uh, on the spec sheet, this is a 33-inch wingspan. It's a plug-and-play, and it includes a Reflex V2. Now, I've never used a Reflex V2, and I thought we'd do something kind of cool today, and that's that I'm going to try and launch the software and plug it in and do it for the first time with no edits. So you'll see what I see. I've never used the Reflex V2 software. I've never used their gyro. So... I think it'd be kind of fun just for you to see what I see for the first time. Um, I know a lot of times on YouTube, because we can edit our content, you don't see the bumps and bruises that we go through when we're trying things out for the first time. So I thought that might be fun for you to see as well as for me to see. And then as far as features go really quickly, it's a 35, 36, 17, 50 KV. I can tell you right now that is, that is the same it's a little bit faster than the motor I have in my Grim Reaper, but it's almost the same setup. My Grim Reaper is a 1400 KV. This is 1700, same motor dimensions, same ESC, and probably the same prop. I believe it's a 7.6 prop. So let's see, does it say the prop size in here? Prop size, 7.5. So my Reaper is a 7.6. So yeah, real close to the Reaper, which means speed-wise it should cruise along pretty good because this one is a lot lighter and a lot more, I think, um, aerodynamic than the Reaper. So anyway, um, they say that this one is a pusher com combination. They say 180 kilometers per hour top speed. I converted that. It's 111 miles per hour for those of you in the U.S. and what, Nigeria? I don't know. There's one other. Liberia? Liberia, right? That's the in Mexico. So I think it's U.S., Mexico, and Liberia, like three countries left using the system. So don't blame me. I, I think we should move to metric myself. Anyway, about 890 grams flying weight, uh, 60 amp ESC, 9 gram metal servos by four. So you do have uh, rudder on this one. So you've got aileron, elevator, rudder, and I guess um, uh, two aileron servos, which is cool. So that means you could probably put in some flaps or spoilerons if you wanted to. So four channel center gravity, 80 to 90 millimeters from the leading edge. And um, a recommended battery is the venerable, that is the venerable uh, 4S2200. I have plenty of those. So cheap battery for this one. And let's see. I think that's about it. It's about three to five minutes of flight time. Hmm, I don't know. I think I get a little more than that on my Reaper, but I guess if you're punching it. Assembly time, 10 to 30 minutes. Uh, I believe that looking at the, you know, kind of getting a look at the box. So I kind of believe that. And then um, let's see. Oh, the rudder doesn't do anything. It looks like it, it has a rudder. So we'll see. Uh, let's see. Wing area. Uh, 12 DM squared, wing area 50.3 DM squared, wing area, wing area, hmm. two different wing areas, and then wing load 74G DM squared. And again, remember this one's a plug in place, so it comes with the Reflex V2. I've got links for the V2 in the description, 32 bucks. I took a look at, at the screen. I've never used one of these before. I did see S bus input over here on the right, which is good. And then uh, only four channels out though, so keep that in mind if you want to use this for another application. One thing that I found very interesting watching their little video on this is that it looks like they load the profile online. You can you you get on. We'll see when I load the software up, but it says it looks like you can load the profile for the particular plane in the controller in the in the gyro. So I've never tried it before. We're gonna we're gonna see what happens. So anyway, that's it. Um, and and the software. If you click on View More and scroll down, there's a link to download the uh, R, the Reflex V2 software. It looks like only Windows versions. They don't have a. I didn't see a Mac version or a Linux version. It was only Windows, and it does come in the form of a RAR file, which means you need to have software on your Windows computer, which does not come default on Windows, to unpack a RAR file. R A R. So just be aware of that. 
uh, you need a RAR extractor. You can get free ones on the Windows Store. That's what I have. All right. So that's it in terms of the specs. 179 bucks. Plug and play, motor, gyro. If you took the gyro out of the equation and allocated them $30, you're in that, you know, $150 range for this plane, which is not, you know, for a plug and play that's got everything, I think that's okay. This is a little small, I think, at that price point, but we'll see. Uh, you know, we'll see. It's got a fast motor, and uh, we'll check in the build quality and see what it looks like. So that's it for the web stuff. I will check questions real quick just to see if there's anything in here before we move on to the video and onto the first look. And uh, I, I, I like doing these live stream versions because that gives you an opportunity to interact and ask questions. So if there's something you'd like to know about, feel free to put pop a question in the chat and I'll try and help you while we're taking a look. Uh, let's see. Well, USA adopted metric in 1975 officially. Yeah, except nothing is measured in US in in, uh, in, in metric out there uh, uh, in the in the system. So okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and do the first. We'll, go, we'll do an unbox now. I hate doing uh, ruffling packages and stuff, so I've already untaped everything. But I tried to leave it kind of in the condition that I got it. So this is the box. We'll just take a look at the uh, at the parts. I do kind of like right away. I like how they're using ball links. Uh, that's that's a good that's a good one. So there's a ball link right here on the control horn, and then they use a simple Z bend into the servo. And I'm assuming it's probably already centered up, which is nice. It just saves time. You know, it's a nice thing to do. On the bottom, there's a plastic capture for the horn, which is good. And I can also see a strap inside this aileron for rigidity, which is good. I'll do make note though that it is an EPO hinge, so. In my case, what I like to do on these planes before I fly them is flex the surface to get that uh, hinge moving a little bit. And I'll probably hook a servo tester on and move it with the servo. But I like to flex the surface a little bit. And then if if I normally what I end up doing is putting Blenderm tape on. Blenderm, if you don't have it, there's a, you get on Amazon, look for 3M Blenderm. And you can, it's a clear tape. You can put that on these seams and that just helps them keep from separating. Because one thing I can tell you on EPO, I have yet to have a durable EPO plane that I've flown for any period of time that didn't separate at the seams. So this one is not mechanically hinged. So you'll probably want to do that. I would recommend it. A blend derm tape. On the bottom for the wing capture into the fuselage, there's some plastic inserts, which looks good. And then the servo wires are laid in nicely. And of course the decals are already on and a little bit of tape here on the end. There's also a little fiberglass bar on the leading edge here and a flat strap on the back. So, you know, that all contributes to rigidity and for these fast movers, that's important because you don't want flutter, that's for sure. So all I can tell you just kind of looking at it is that the, it looks, it looks good. I think it looks fine. I don't, it's straight, very straight leading edge, that's fine. Uh, I don't see any, I'm looking, I'm looking down the long edge to see if I see any issues with washout or anything that might be unintended, but I don't. It looks, it looks fine. And that is actually, believe it or not, that's a pretty good size aileron for this size plane. So I expect this thing to be highly responsive. <laughs> if you're moving at any degree of speed and you have uh, some rates dialed in, this is going to move, you know, it's going to move quick. So just pay attention to that. That's a pretty good size aileron. All right, that's the port wing. We'll just set that aside. Oh, hey, one other thing. While I just looked at it, I just wanted to remind you guys, I've done some updates on my merch store. So I've got some shirts. I did I did a crew shirts for me, Freddie, and Dave. Uh, so I've got some updated stuff. I've got phone cases and mugs and stickers and stuff like that. So if you haven't been on my store, there's probably a link in the bottom of the video to check it out. Uh, just throwing that out there. Buy a t-shirt. All right, here's, an, here's the uh, starboard wing. And uh, same deal. We'll look down the leading edge. I always look at the leading edge because I want to see that it's straight and it's not warped and bent, you know, and it gives you indications of whether or not there's a twist in the wing. So that's good. I don't see any problems there. And again, the same mechanics on the bottom. You got the, the plastic capture for the horn, and I think I just stuck something in my finger there. Uh, there's the fiberglass strap for rigidity. Interesting that they laid it flat. A lot of times, if that's a flat, like a narrow strip, a lot of times they're on the edge because that's where the the uh, rigidity comes from when they're flat like this if that's a flat bar i'm not sure if it's flat or not but if it's flat um it kind of looks like it is that's odd that they put it put it down flat normally I, i'd want to see that turn 90 degrees because that's where the uh i'm trying to get that sliver out of my finger that's where the uh that's where the rigidity comes from on these flat ones and then again fiberglass up front so nothing nothing unusual 
All right. Um, they say Metal Gear servos, 9 gram digital Metal Gear servos. These are FMS servos. And I do see a Metal Gear under that horn there. And again, the horn's already attached and it looks like it's probably centered. So uh, looks good. I like that. You know, I don't mind. There, I, I've had this, I've had this um, realization that in the hobby, there are modelers and there are pilots and there are modeler pilots and one thing that i've realized is that the people who are into modeling they get into specific details about construction the ones that are pilots that they're not so much interested in the build aspects they rather just fly um, they're not too interested in these specific build aspects anyway let's take a look at the hardware bag two props they look like generic apc style i don't see let's just take one out and look Oh man, that sliver is just gonna kill me. I have a sliver from that fiberglass or whatever. Yeah, it's not branded APC, but it's an APC style, you know, electric, thin electric, seven by five. I don't know if you'll make out the numbers there, but that's seven by five prop. And uh, they, they, they get two of them, which is cool. I like that they're including some spares and they even include a USB cable. In fact, I'm gonna take that USB cable out because we're gonna to come to that later. I figure I'm just gonna, when it comes to their reflex, I'm gonna use everything they give just to see how it works. That way we give them every opportunity to succeed. So I'll just take the reflex USB cable out and we'll set it aside. Other than the props and the cable, there's only a handful of screws, which are probably just there to screw the wings on. I think that's it. So very simple, very simple assembly. This one's going to go together very quickly. I can tell you that. One thing they talk about in the literature is that it's got an FPV canopy, and that's what this is about. So if you want to put a camera on here, it's got a slot up there for your lens to stick out. If you want to put a, uh, some kind of FPV camera in there, you know, a little uh, first-person view, uh, CCD-type camera. I don't think it's – I don't know. Maybe you might be able to fit like a – you could probably, yeah, I, I reckon you probably could easily fit a DJI system on there if you wanted to, like an Air. That wouldn't be a problem. Or a Caddx, you'd probably bolt that right up top. And it would get nice airflow too. And it's got a nice little shroud. So if you want to add the camera, that's good. Nice little option if you want to fly it FPV and fast. All right, here's a look at the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator. And same deal. It's got a ball link. It's a plastic ball link though. So check that out. Little plastic injection molded plastic ball link there. And again, it's got straps uh, or, or reinforcement to avoid flex on the control surface, which is great. And then the torque connection is also plastic. The torque tube or torque bar, torque arm, whatever you want to call it. That's plastic. So that goes side by side. And then uh, plastic captures on the top for the screws, which is good. That's good. That's fine. And I don't see, let's just take a look at the leading edge. Yeah, that looks very straight. I don't, you know, I don't see any bowing or bending. It looks very straight and flat. So cool. Looks good. I like it. All right, let's take a look at the fuselage now. And the other thing I want to do, oh, there's the spar. So here's the wing spar. Uh, it's a weapon in five states. All right, let's take the, there's two halves back here. There's a tail section. So we'll take that out and you can see that's taped up uh, nice and tidy to keep the wires organized while you get it put together. And then same arrangement on the back, you know, no, nothing different than what we've seen already, of course, and more plastic captures to hold things together. It looks like a magnet and another uh, screw capture up front. And then let's take a look at the leading edge of this guy just to make sure we don't see anything we don't like. I don't see anything there. That looks fine to me. And again, plastic captures on the back. I really appreciate that because I know a lot of, I've seen planes that don't don't have something on both sides. I like to sandwich the foam. So I like to see that uh, where you have a sandwich connection on both sides, That that's good. To me, that's uh, safer, better. Keeps things together, especially if you got a fast mover, if you're moving quick. All right, there's another canopy in here. This is the standard canopy. So if you're not gonna be out there FPV flying, you can stick this on there and you got a standard normal canopy. I like that they, they glued the, the plastic on. I always make a mess of this. I don't know why. It's a thing with me. I cannot glue a canopy on without getting glue somewhere. So I'm glad they included that one. And I also noticed it's tongued up front. It's got a tongue uh, uh, connector up front that slides into the fuselage, which is good. That's the way I like to see things. Uh, probably a good idea to put some tape on the back uh, so you can lift it off. I normally do that. I take a piece of clear tape, fold it over on itself, and then run it down here on the back side. So that way the tape, and I have the tape stick up above, and that way I can pop it off without grabbing hold and pinching and compressing the foam. So that's what I like to do on those. And I will 
do the same on this plane. All right, next up is the fuselage. Hopefully I can get this out without too much noise. I hate noise on unbox videos, so I'm just going to apologize up front. I'm sorry. Oh, I see the, the prop nut on the back. There we go. The uh, prop nut, the spinner, the, the bullet connector on the back was stuck in the foam. It wouldn't come out. So here's a look at the fuselage. Skinny, very narrow, very skinny. And here's a look at the bottom side. So they've already got skid plates installed. Remember, this is a hand launch plane. I meant I read in the in the description on their website that it had special grips for your hand. So there are a couple of different ways you can launch these. Those grips are there for this type of grip. The one thing I'll say is if if you don't have experience with this type of thing, when you if you hand launch this thing, all I can say is throw like a baseball. You know, get that or a football. Get your arm moving and don't stop. You know, if you continue the motion, I've launched uh, countless countless numbers of planes overhead. And um, I've only nicked myself one time, and, and that was my fault for being sloppy about it. Another way you can launch these is from the nose. You can hold it up here, give it a little bit of power, and because it's got a stabilizer, if you invoke the stabilizer, it'll help keep the wings from rocking while you launch it nose up. So that's another option you have, uh, just in case you don't really care to hand launch. And then uh, as far as the prop goes, it's a Predator 60 amp ESC. So there's a look at the ESC. And as far as the connection, it's an XT60, which is good because that's what I use. And then it looks like it's got some wiring already in place on the stabilizer to connect your ailerons. The elevator is already in there. I'm sure the rudder and throttle are there. And then these will go into your, I guess these will go into your radio. So if you're using a PWM radio, these will go into your PWM leads. If you use SBUS, you can take all of these out. They, they even have one for SBUS labeled. They do. Yeah, so if you have SBUS or mode, um, SBUS or PPM mode, if you're using that for your connection to the reflex, then you can probably get rid of all of these. They're not necessary, uh, which is one of the reasons I like uh, SBUS. It get, gets rid of some wiring. I also thought I'd stick the battery in just to give you guys a look at what a 4-cell 2200 looks like, what it's installed. Um, obviously, we can't do any balance tests, but you at least get a look at what's going on with the battery. And uh, it looks like it fits in there just fine. I don't see any problems there. Okay, on the back, there is a, I'm going to guess that's either, that's the elevator servo on the back, and that's already installed. Metal gears as well. I'm just checking to see. Those are definitely metal gears in there. And then, of course, the motor. This is a, uh, what does that say? Predator. It's Predator 3536, uh, 1750 kV. That's what that says. And, of course, it's got the prop nut, the bullet nose prop nut on the back. And all the plastic captures for the screws for the empennage. So yeah, very, very nice. It's going to go together quick. No doubt about that. All right. Now let's, I wanted to do, let's talk about the guest of honor. Let's go back to the workspace. That's it for the first look. You've seen the plane now. So now we know what's going on there. Um, I don't see any complaints about audio. I didn't check audio today, but I didn't see any complaints. So we'll just keep moving. So now I think what we'll do is I want to go back and check out the software. And before we do, I'm going to take this USB cable out, out and unpack it and I got to figure out where it connects okay okay the software connects <laughs> right here so there's the let me let me get a pointer out I'm going to reposition my mic a little bit since I've got the box out of the way now so I can get this mic more in front of me so the USB connection is right here. There is a hole down here on the bottom, but I don't I, I really don't think that's intended. I think that's for the servo wires from the from the wings. I don't really think that's intended to connect to USB. So if you want to connect to the reflex software, it's gotta come out. So I don't know. Yep, it's it's definitely got whatever whatever flight mode they intended for this to be in, you know, in other words, being strapped down, it's strapped down. It's it's not it's not happy about coming out either. All right, it looks like I, in my efforts to pop it out, I lifted the case off the top. Good Lord, they had some tape on there, man. Woo, that was on there. You have to get in there and dig that thing out. Okay, there's the USB port, and that's what I wanted to see. That's unfortunate that there wasn't a plan in place uh, for the USB to be connected without removing it, because now I gotta go back and replace the tape, right? Okay, so there's the USB connection, and I'm going to, before I plug it in, though, 
I'm going to launch the software. So that's what we had to do to get access to the gyro. Um, I don't see any other way to do it. I, I really don't think you could come through the side of the plane to make that change. All right. So that, with that said, let's go ahead and go over to the workspace. And I think I popped the camera up here there. Um, should be able to get the camera up there. Where are you camera? Oh, I guess not. Let me try this. I, I just want to, I want to get the camera. I did some resizing of things. I want to get that camera up there. So let me just um, pop that overhead in here again. And there we go. I have to resize this a little bit. Okay. So there's the camera. And now you can see the controller again while we look at the desktop. So I'm just going to put this away. I unpack the reflex software right here on my desktop and I'll go ahead. I haven't opened it yet. This is the first time I've gone into this folder. So you're seeing this for the first time, just the way I see it. I have no idea what's going to happen here. Here's an executable FMS param. So I'll just run that. And here we go. It says, welcome to FMS model. Let me make this camera a little bit smaller so you guys can see the controller software. There we go. And uh, let's see. I don't see anything. It says USB disconnected. It did not prompt me to install any kind of driver. So barring that, I will go ahead and, and connect the USB to the computer and we'll see what happens. So never installed this before, never used the software before. So whatever is going to happen here, it's all new to me. And I got, I still got USB disconnected. I see blinking. I see blinking on the device. And all right, let's close this. USB device is not recognized. I'm getting a prompt on my computer. Last USB device you connected malfunctioned. Windows does not recognize it. Okay, so let's launch it again. USB disconnected. I don't see anything here. All right, let's see if there's anything in here that I can install in terms of drivers. I got login images, bunch of bitmaps. I don't see any drivers though. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm looking in the software. Installation instructions. Okay. Click on that. Nothing. All right. Well, this is fun. Let's, um, let's click on some of these links on the bottom and see what comes up. I clicked on that and it looks like a Chinese version of their website. So that's not useful. And right back to the main website. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's go back to the reflex reflex page and see if there's anything on the reflex page that can tell me what to do. If you guys in chat have used these before and you know, go ahead and pop something in here. We can save the time. But this is why I did this live, just to see what would happen. Download links. Let's see if there's anything in here that I missed. The software, stabilize mode, optional mode, how-to videos, software installation video. Might have to watch a software installation video, which I'm not going to do live because that would be crazy. And um, that's that's it. It should be updated. Yeah, I know. Will Dunn says it should be updated already. I get that, but I still want to see it. <laughs> you know, I want to get in here and check it out and see what's going on. Um, I'd like to I'd like to see what the gyro says. I like to see what my options are. You know, th that's the point, right? I want to see aircrafts. I just clicked on this up here. Power the re power the reflex unit before program replacement. Okay, we'll close this and let's try and disconnect and reconnect again. I'll just do that. Pop that off. Connect it again. I do hear a bong on the computer and it says device is not recognized. So let's see. I'm going to bring up my device manager and see what's going on there. And we'll see if there's anything in here. Unknown USB device descriptor request failed. Update driver. Search automatically. Search up Windows Update. Check for updates. Run Zadig, it fixes USB issues. Yeah, I know, I hate running Zadig for, oh great, it's gonna install antivirus software. That's not what I look for right now. All right, I guess not. Um, I do have Zadig, I don't know if that's gonna help me at all or not, we'll see. Nice option, list all devices. Here, that's the one that failed. No driver. Uh, let's try and install the Win USB driver and see what happens. We'll just see what happens. This is Zadig. So I found the device in the list. You have to click on option, show all devices. I found the unknown device with the device descriptor request failed. 
And once you have that, you can install the USB, Win USB driver. Let's we'll see if that helps. It says it can take some time. Be my luck, it blows up my microphone. If the microphone dies, that's the end of the video because I'm not going to try and fix all this on a live stream. But you, you guys have seen the plane at this point. You've seen the first look. And this is not as clean as I would like to have seen it. I would like some instructions or a driver included with the archive or something to that effect so that if I want to connect to the gyro, I can. Um, and of course, there it is. Driver installation failed. Let's see what other options there are. Let's try... We'll try this one, LibUSB Win32. We'll see if that works. That's unfortunate that this is that you have to go through this. I don't like I don't like these I don't like these types of issues. I can tell you, unlike the um, the uh, for example, in the Hobby Eagle, uh, they on their when you launch the Hobby Eagle uh, application, it tells you right up front. It says here's the link to download the USB driver for the software. So go get that, install it, and then when you do, it just connects immediately. So no problems. Um, I think FMS has some work to do on that front because I would like to see a little bit of, of help with the driver install so the user doesn't have to go through this. But hopefully it'll be worth it. When <laughs> the installation process can take up to... Okay, while it's thinking, oh, that failed too. All right, well, that's it. I'm done. I'll have to mess around with this offline. I don't want to penalize you guys and make you watch this. That's painful. So I'm not going to go through all that. So with that said, that's it for the software installation. That's a fail. We'll have to go through and figure out why we're not seeing it. Maybe reboot the computer, maybe try a different driver, maybe try the, um, I have the CP21X driver, so it's not that. I'm really not sure what's going on there. So that would be my one critique is that I don't have a USB driver for this. And I have lots of USB drivers on my machine. I, I can figure all kinds of stuff. iNav, Betaflight, Hobby Eagles, you name it. I mean, I'm in it. So anyway, there's the first look on the FMS Reflex. Now, I have, uh, it's not going to be ready this week, and we're going to Joe Nall next week. So it's going to be a little bit of time before this one shows up for a maiden video. So you'll just have to be patient for that and be on the lookout on the channel. But we will get this one out. And again, it's got the stabilizer. So once the stabilizer is working, then we can use that to help with the launch process. And hopefully in flight, we'll have the ability to watch what's going on in flight. So that wraps up my first look at the uh, at the FMS Flash. And William Dunn says mine bound and set up on my Radio Master with no problems. Yeah, no, again, I'm I'm not I'm not concerned that it won't work. I'm what I'm concerned about is that I want to see what options I have, and that's part of the nature of of uh, you know doing the review video. So I know if you're just consuming and you plug it in, it works. You're like Yahtzee, let's go fly. <laughs> yeah, I get that, but it's just not uh, you know I like to see it. I like to get in there and take a look and see what's going on. You know what I mean? All right, fellas, that's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know new material hits the channel. That's all I've got for today. Hope you enjoyed the first look. Thanks, FMS, for sending this out for review. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Get out there and fly something.